Hello everyone, my name is Corazar, and welcome back to the Vintage Story Guide. We are back in the world on this slightly drizzly day. It should come as no surprise to anybody who's been tuning in recently, or not recently. But it is yet another wonderful day here at the Hobbit Hole, and it is starting to slowly shape up into a proper little hill here, isn't it? We do need to fill in some of these gaps here with some dirt eventually, but that will come as we start filling in all of the rest of our rooms here. Now, I have been a little busy between episodes. I made a whole bunch of iron tools after I smashed a bunch of blooms into ingots, and I have been setting about doing some farming. I've spent some more grain on our sheep, and we have some more milk. I already drank that one bucket that we had in the last episode, but one of our other sheep has recently given birth, so we have about 15 more days of lactation from that sheep, which means we can capitalize on that and actually get some cheese making going. Now, that's going to happen over the course of probably this whole episode, so we are going to leave it for now. And every day at about 5 o'clock, I need to remember to come back and milk that sheep, and that's what we're going to do. That's not all, however, because I was thinking we need to get some more of this aged wood, as you can see behind me over our doorway there. We need to fill in some gaps there, as well as other places. And I know one place we can get them, that is the Translocators. And we haven't really talked about certain things that you can find there, so let's go take a look, shall we? So if you come down here to our Translocator we've been through a few times, you'll notice that well, there's junk that's missing here, isn't there? Yep, that's because I came in and I cleared that one out, and I cleared this one out. I'm not sure if we actually cleared the other side. Let's take a look. Ah, I did. I thought I hadn't. Let's try this one instead. Oh, we haven't activated you yet. Oh, oh, okay. Well, this gives us a chance to do a bit of exploration and also touch on something technical that someone pointed out to me and that I wanted to try with all of you here and see how it goes. So I'm going to go and get a few odds and ends ready. But first, something I want to do here is that this translocator takes us down to, what, the bauxite area? No, the claystone area. Okay. In that case, we'll do it. We're going to run back. And I'm going to tear out the floor. And I'm going to replace it with some claystone bricks and some polished claystone. So, let's grab this. Now, the translocator will float happily. Just make sure you don't smack it with your axe. Because you can break these things, I think. I think a perimeter of claystone that's polished. And then the center, eh, just maybe some flat claystone instead. I don't know. Like that. And then one, two, three. In a circle like that. Yes, this way we can come down here and we'll know that we are going to the claystone area. In the same vein, I want to come over to our other hensicator over here and put down some bauxite because that is where that one takes us. So, ah, here you are. Ah, and this one has the junk that I was looking for. Okay. So, do you mind? Really now. As I was saying, so these blocks here, these are decorative blocks, but they are also called clutter because, well, look at them, they're clutter. But that also gives them a special, well, ability to disappear when you break them. Now, note that if you are breaking clutter blocks, you'll want to use your pickaxe because an axe just won't really cut it. I mean, you can, but it'll take a while. So pickaxe, bam, they come up, and sometimes you will get the block back. There we go, we didn't get that one back. It is a 50% chance to get any given block back. So if you're looking to collect these things, you might need to visit a few different places to find them. And there we go. So now we have a pretty cleaned up place. I'm going to keep the chests here because I may come back for them later to add to our own attics and such as clutter. Let's go ahead and we're going to break this floor up as well. 
Yes, thank all of you. Thank you so much for all of your noise. And then I'm going to lay down some bauxite blocks here so that when we come here, we know exactly where we're going. Whew. That's pretty eye melting. That's okay, though. Let's have a bite to eat while we're here. Steal back my ladder. And let's get going. And as you can see, I have, of course, come through and planted our fields. We have a few open spaces, but that's okay. I'm not super concerned about getting tons and tons of spelt or other veggies because we have so many to go through. But I'm going to get ready for a spot of adventure, and then I'll meet all of you when we are ready to head out and fix up that last translocator nearby and see where it goes. All right, everyone, it is the next day. And we are ready for our bit of experiment and adventure. So the first thing you need to do is not forget your temporal gears. In our case, we need two, but that's because we are a clockmaker. So if you're not a clockmaker, you'll need three. Don't forget. And then you need a translocator that you have not activated yet. Now, for our purposes today, if you are doing what we are doing today, then you don't want to activate it just yet. Because what we're going to do is we are going to cheat a little bit. And I wanted to do this once with you guys on camera, and then I probably won't do it again, probably ever, because I do think it is pretty cheaty. But what we're going to do is we are going to save our game, make a backup, and then we are going to activate this translocator, and we'll go through it. If we don't like where we end up, we are going to undo everything and try again. Because these translocators don't make their linkages until you completely repair them and they are finished generating their destination. So from here, what you're going to want to do is you want to open your console, type in slash auto save now, all one word. And then you'll open it up again. And this time you type slash gen backup. And there you go. You don't have to generate a backup you can just copy your save game file if you want, but I like to do backups just so I have a snapshot of where I was. So we are now going to close the game. And once you have closed Vintage Story, you're going to go to your start menu by either pressing the Windows key or your start button in the lower left-hand corner. Or if you have Linux, well, you're on your own. I don't know where Vintage Story is installed to, but you're going to go to your Vintage Story install location. In my case, there's percent app data percent. That will take you right where you need to go. And then go to Vintage Story data and saves. And what we're going to do is we're going to take our saves right here and we are going to copy our save to somewhere. I like to use the desktop because it's easy. And then if you don't want to mess up your map by having a bunch of extra generated areas, you're going to need to find your map. Now, in our case, I know mine is the largest one here, so I'm going to just copy it over here. But if it helps, you might just want to copy the whole folder over because it's not that big. So once we're copied, we can then start the game back up again. Okay, here we are back in the game. We're going to get our temporal gears out, and we are going to go ahead and... Right click and right click and let it do its thing. And again, if you are not a clockmaker, you need three gears. Now, it is already done generating where it's going to go and we don't know where it's going to go yet, but we might want to think about where we want to end up. So we have currently three translocators. One of them takes us decently far south. One takes us decently far southeast. And one takes us northeast, up to here. So it might be nice if we had a translocator that took us either like due north or really anywhere other than this diagonal half of the map. So north, northwest, west. I'd settle for southwest, but I'd kind of like to go over here. So let's sort of say in one of these directions, this 90 degree arc. So we're going to cross our fingers, hop on in and see where we end up. Boom. And we are in, oh, we're in a chalk rock area. Interesting. Oh, wow, we are pretty far to the west. Interesting. Well, I wasn't expecting that. 
But here we are. So yeah, so we are actually pretty high up in the world. And this is actually a really nice place. I actually want something like this because we haven't found chalk rock yet in this world. And man, do I miss chalk. What a beautiful color. Nice and perfectly white. We can check out the treasure chests here. Some interesting stuff. But yes, we're going to wash, rinse, and repeat that process and see where we might end up next. So with my vintage story data folder already open, I'm going to make a new folder somewhere else, in this case on the desktop. And we're going to say chalk west. And we're going to copy our save into here. We're also going to copy our map into there as well. And now we're going to copy the original ones, and I'm actually going to put them in a fresh folder called original. And we'll put them up here and move them into this folder just so we can make sure that we are always grabbing the right ones. And we're going to copy these here and replace them in our folders. And now let's pop back into the game. Okay, here we are back in the game. And as you can see, the translocator is still broken or just broken once again. So we are going to once more repair it up, give it a few moments until it is finished and starts dropping particles. And now we can do it again. And this time it seems that we are in a very deep andesite cave. Oh my, with some nickel hanging out here. We are extremely deep here. So we're going to just drop a few dirt blocks here so we don't die. Oh my. <laughs> that was close. But yes, so we can take a look and see where we are. We are in what looks to be a claystone desert somewhere pretty far south. We're kind of close to our original deep south area here but we are off to the west and actually a good bit farther south. So if we liked this area, then we could keep this one, or we could of course back out and place the files in our folder again and try once more. But for now, we're gonna head back and have a brief chat before we, oh my goodness. As I was saying, we're gonna head back here and have a brief chat before we move on. So this process is something you can repeat as many times as you want until you get sort of the right direction or the right stone type or the right whatever you happen to be looking for. And I don't recommend doing this too much if you want to sort of keep the survival feeling of your world. But if you're really struggling to find a particular ore or a particular stone type and you haven't been off in a specific direction, maybe there's like a mountain somewhere like over here keeps you from passing or maybe there's just a deep forest full of wolves and bears that just doesn't let you through because you keep dying there well maybe this is the solution for you where you can go and try to get a nice new path over to where you need to go by teleporting now i'm going to actually bring back that first save and we're going to keep that partly because it's the first one because i don't feel like customizing this too too much and two because i do like the chalk so i figured let's go ahead and keep it so let's go and replace those files now. Okay, so here we are back on the desktop. I have opened the Chalk West folder here, and we are just going to drop these saves back into their folders. Replace that one, and we're going to replace the map. And we're done. We can go ahead and close this out. If we want to, we can delete our original ones. We won't need them anymore. And now we are ready to get back in the game and continue our exploration. All right, everyone, we are back in the world where we have selected the chalk location as our destination. As you can see, we have the fully repaired translocator already here. So I think since it's been a while since we've been anywhere new, why don't we go and spend some time exploring these new lands? Now, the first thing we need to do is we need to mark where we are. So we have translocator home. And we'll make you cyan squiggle or swirl. Now, I think 
I would very much like to scoot across here. Wow, okay. Now, right here, we have something new here already. This is anthracite. This is a very strong type of coal. It's very difficult to break. You need bronze to break it. But in a fire pit, it lasts for like 196 seconds. So over three minutes. And of course, we have chalk, which is a really nice building material. I'm not going to collect any today, but I am going to, first of all, see what else is here, if anything. Copper anthracite. Wow. Okay. Nifty. And then we should also do a density search. Wow. Copper, anthracite, borax, fluorite, and emerald. Interesting. And we have, ooh, we have basalt. All right. I'm digging it. We are going to turn you off immediately. And I'm actually going to drop down and just pop down a couple torches and almost die in the process. So yes, let's pop down a torch. Basically, one in here and one here out here just to keep things from spawning for a little bit while we make our way out. Now basalt is last igneous rock, the only one we haven't come across until now. And it is the only igneous rock that can appear or spawn above any sedimentary rocks. Because of course it can be formed by volcanic action and that is what has happened here most likely. Eh. Have fun, guys. Have fun duking it out. So I'm going to go ahead and we'll just build a little... My. This is baratory, isn't it? Let's build a little pillar right here. There we are. And I spied right there. There we go. I spied a trader. I don't yet... Ah, uh, there's a bear. Are you a bear? You are a bear. Hmm. Okay. Good to know. Let's be careful so we don't get bearful. Ow. Careful. Like I said. Ooh, there's different butterflies here. Hello, butterflies. What are you? Let's get one. Come here. Gotcha. And you, what are you? No, get back here. Ah. I will get you. There we go. We have a dead peacock and a dead rock grayling. Interesting. Okay, let's go see what you are and who you are. I suspect... Oh, furniture trader. I was going to say luxury is giving resonator. But hello. Yep, we have the same conversation options here. Ah, 12 gears for a purple heart door. Yeah, nope. Sorry, buddy. We are not paying that much for that. I hear foxes. I hear bunnies. I spy more butterflies. And that... Oh, the fox hurt me. Interesting. Okay. Whatever, dude. Whatever. Now, since we're in a basalt area, one thing that you might find on the ground are pieces of obsidian. Like this right here. And if you are lucky enough to start the game in an area like this, obsidian is going to be a better go-to for most stone tools than flint. Because obsidian tools get a bonus on basically everything they do, from the durability to their damage to their effectiveness to their speed and so on. They can't break anything of higher level than stone can, i.e. flint. And what are you? Are you a wolf? You're a wolf. You're two wolves, in fact. Oh, you're still coming after me. Okay, whatever, dude. Oh, you're going for the bunny? Whatever. Get out of here. Now, there is a ruin right there. This is a really weird place, I have to say. It's, like, surrounded by mountains. This would be a really cool place to live if it was a little less hostile 
looking at you, wolf. That's right. Let's go deal with that other wolf. And then we'll take a look at that ruin right here. I have to say, I looked at the map to see if I could find ruins. I didn't spot any except for one farther up. But man, let me tell you, these new ruins that are the same color as everything around them are real difficult to do anything with or to notice. Hey, there we go. Anybody else? Don't see anybody. We have, looks like a little ore ruin. There should be an ore vessel right about here. Hello. And we got quartz. Ugh. Gross. I will have her take you. Anything else down here worth looking at? Any more? Ah, bunny soil. Here we go. That's what I wanted. Sign me up, yo. Sign me up. All right. I think this ruin is about done. So, let's see. We could try crossing up here because I saw on the map, if we zoom out a bit up here, there's a ruin right up here. And there's some bauxite to the north, which is kind of interesting. Now, it is already getting a bit late. Whoops, I didn't mean to do that. I wanted to pick up the obsidian. It's already getting a bit late, so we do want to think about heading home soonish. So maybe we'll take a quick peek, run away if there are any bears or wolves that run across. Now, do note that these obsidian stones do indicate the presence of a larger chunk of obsidian below. So if you are interested in building with obsidian or you think you need more for tools, then you might actually want to mark where you're picking these up from. And then once you can dig down with a pickaxe, then you can actually dig out a lot more obsidian because it spawns as a full-on stone block. And that means you can quarry it, you can break it into multiple pieces, and yeah, it's very handy. Now that looks quite dangerous to cross, but let's go for it. We have, ooh, we have a big hole here. Wow. Look at this mess. Do you, like, cut through this mountain by any chance? You do not. Okay. Ah, that's right. The other limiting factors. I didn't bring any food with us. Ah, uh, you know what? I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. What's down here? Any trouble down here? We have shale. Back to the chalk very briefly. And then we have... <gasps> oh, fun. I'm going to block this off here. Lock. I'm also going to just pop down. Oh, hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to pop a few torches down on the way, too. Just to uh, prevent that from happening again. Uh, too late. Much better. Let's just do a bit of this. Don't need two of you. So we just stumbled across something really fun and really rare. Not terribly useful, but very neat to find in the course of venturing. Uh, more of you guys. But these are glow worms. And glowworms are just hanging vine-like things in caves that glow. And unfortunately, you can't really do anything with them. If you harvest them, they just kind of break. So there isn't a whole lot we can do here, but they are very pretty. And there are some mods that let you harvest them. I'm not sure what for. And they do slow you if you walk through them, so beware. If you're trying to get away from enemies, they will slow you down. Ooh, hello. What's up this way? nothing. Okay, let's get back to the surface, and we're going to continue our brief exploration to the north over the mountain, and then we will make our way back home.
Oh my. They're in that direction. Okay. And let's see if we can get up over this mountain here. And see what we can see. Wow. What a landscape. My goodness. Look at that. Is that crazy or what? That is so cool. I do love the wild terrain generation in Vintage Story. Let's swing up here to this little, oh, good grief. This little ruin. Sandstone. That means this should be a special-ish one. Let's dig down right up here at this end. Because that one's in water. Here we go. What do we have? Food. Got some rye, looks like. There should be a few more somewhere around here. Well, I guess not. Just the food this time, apparently. Okay. Okay, well, I think it's time for us to book it home for the evening. And hopefully we can make it there without too much trouble. Hello, Rift. You can go a wee bit close there. But yeah, this is a really neat place. It's a bit hard to explore because of how mountainous and how heavily forested it is, which means that any traversal through here will be very bare and wolf-filled. But this is a really cool place to be, and it's great to have some chalk. If we hadn't already basically built most of our house out of limestone, I would have loved to get some chalk and build with that instead. But since we already have limestone and we've used it, then we'll probably stick with that. It does get a bit funky if you try to mix them too much. Okay, and here is our cave. In we go. It's a bit precarious, but, uh, oh yeah. That's a big yikes, bro. But here we are, home-ish, safe-ish, at last. Let's toss a torch down here and see what is... Wow. Oh, and there's the copper. Well, there's some copper, at least. Not the one we detected up here, but there's copper and looks like the green stone down there. Okay, good to know. And at some point we'll come back and dig out some of this, but this isn't super important to me at the moment. So we're going to go ahead and leave it. And I think for now, we will mark this as a neat place to go when we need some chalk. And don't forget to milk your sheep. There we go. Put your milk in a barrel in preparation for making cheese. And find a place for butterflies. One there and one there. Check it out. A dead peacock butterfly and a dead rock grayling. All right. Well, everyone, that is about all the time we have for this episode of the Vintage Story Guide. I hope you enjoyed this little lesson in how to, well, cheat a little bit, if that's your thing, and how to use that to your advantage in order to find a transicator that takes you to a place you want to go. It is certainly possible and can be very frustrating when a transicator that you think is brand new takes you somewhere you've already been or at least very very close and so this can be a way to work around that if you want to kind of slightly spoil the survival feeling of the game but going forward i don't think we'll be using that i wanted to just show you all how to take advantage of that and that'll be that over the course of the next couple episodes i think i want to get working on our wind setup and specifically wind setup so we can get our health hammers going because we want to make some armor that's this stuff or more specifically fix it up so that we can then go and tackle the resonance archive so look forward to some terraforming some building and then probably some mechanical workings but that will be a story for the next episode and beyond as always my name has been Korazar. thank you all for watching and i'll see you in the next one.